Hey guys, in my last video, if you don't know how to do or resolve or add vectors yet, look at my last video, sort of an introduction to what a vector is, and I did a small example. And I forgot to mention that uh, when we were figuring out the angle, which was 106 degrees, that is 106 degrees away from the horizontal. So I referenced it to the XY planes, so you kind of always want to establish a reference, I suggest you use that. So it's 106, the direction is 106 degrees away from the horizontal. Anyways, we'll get on to this. So we have a problem um, here. Uh, it's kind of like the last one, but I'll, re I'll kind of say it to you because it's coming straight from a biomechanics textbook. So, Daisy walks across a force platform and the force ex is exerted by her foot during a step are recorded. The peak vertical force so let's just say the peak, yeah, force that's pointing upward is 1200 newtons, this force acts upward on daisy. At the same time, the breaking fric frictional force is 200, which acts backwards on daisy. How large is the resultant of these forces, and what is the direction of the resultant force? So we know how to do this. This is sort of kind of, it's a, it's a 2D um, example, and we're going to approach it the same way as how we would um, approach any problem. So what we would do first is kind of figure out what direction, roughly, our resulting force would be in, so we would redry properly, just to kind of get a clearer picture, and then we'll figure out the direction in terms of the angle which the resultant force is pointing at. Okay, so the way how I would redraw this, let's let's say if we have a our Cartesian XY plane here. See these these vectors aren't angled. They're straight going up and straight coming to the left. So we don't have to take into account it's not really slanted or anything. So we could line them up with the axes however we want. So let's just draw this real quick okay whatever so how would I draw this um personally what I would do I'll take the 1200 and line it up with the y-axis so this would be our 1200 newtons and then like I said in the last example you kinda want the head to touch the tail of the next vector which means that instead of drawing the angle or the vector here we want it here because we could extend the vector remember I was saying this before we could extend it to however length so basically it's coming from here this is 200 oh sorry to confuse you but this is 200 and this is 12 okay therefore our resultant vector if you add one going up and one going left it's going to be like this right visually if we kind of imagine it and that's how it is okay so how are we going to get this um, resultant vector well as you can see here there's a nice little right triangle and we know with right triangles we can use Pythagorean's theorem. So let's do that right now. I lost my red marker, but I have to make do. So c squared equals a squared plus b squared. We can say this is our a squared. So c squared equals 200 squared plus 1200 squared c squared equals 40,000 plus 1 4 4 mil okay so what we're going to do here is add these up and then to get rid of this c uh the square root we're going to square root this so that goes away and then we're going to square root the addition of this this equals to, let me do this quickly.
12. So the hypotenuse now, the resultant vector, resultant vector magnitude is equal to 1216.55 newtons. Okay? Whoopsies. So we have the we have the magnitude. Now since we have the magnitude, we can figure out the angle. Right? So we know it's pointing let's let's redraw it. Now we don't we don't really need well we can you don't have to redraw it, but um at the end I'll show you just for the direction. Okay. So it's stemming from here, right? This is where the vector is beginning. So we're gonna take this angle. So what can we use? We can use tan since we have both the opposite and adjacent side values. And now we have obtained the hypotenuse value as twelve sixteen point five five. So we can use tan or we can use sine or we can use cos. I would like to use the sine function. So let's do sine equals sine theta equals opposite over hypotenuse. So this equals two hundred that's opposite newtons over twelve sixteen point five five. Theta is equal to 200 divided by 12, 16.55. Remember, just I'm just going to show you this. Second function, inverse sine. We always use that when we're finding the angle. And that equals 9.6 degrees. 9.646. So we could say 9.5 degrees. Degree, okay, 9.5 degrees from where? From what? Right? So this is the direction. We know it's 9.5 degrees. But we kind of have to establish a reference. So are we going to say away from the vertical? I think it's easier for someone to understand that this is 9. I'm just going to flip this around here. Okay. No, let's not do that. Um, bear with me for a second. So, I think it's easier if we say it's, if we redraw it, so we have our sort of x, y coordinates, right? And let's use blue as a resultant vector. That is terribly drawn, I'm, I apologize, of 1216.55. And we know this angle now is 9.6, right? 9.5. So, and we know this angle is 90. So if we add these two, so 9.5 plus 90 equals 99.5. Point five degrees away from horizontal. Why do we say this? This is because if we say it's ninety nine point five degrees away, it's going this tells us that the direction of the um resultant vector it has a negative component, has a negative x value component because it's in the second quadrant remember everything here is negative and it has to have a negative component because it's pointing in this direction so it's really important to reference everything from the horizontal this horizontal so if it was only let's say if this was um 50 5 degrees so it will be 145 degrees away from the horizontal. If it was down here, and it was, let's say, 10, 
you add the whole thing. So 10 plus 90 plus 90, 190 away from the horizontal. So always kind of reference your direction away from the horizontal so they know which way and how the resultant vector that you, you know, you summed, um, how it's pointing or what direction it's in. Okay? So what we did was we kind of redrew the whole problem. Always do that. I advise you do that just so you kind of do it for you and how you would like to draw it. I mean, if this is if this is a good way you think you could solve it like that, then by all means do that. Use Pythagorean theorem to um, figure out the magnitude. Once we have the magnitude, we could figure out the direction it's in, and then relate it back to the x um, or the horizontal of the coordinate system. So we know the direction. In this case, 9.5 plus 90, 99.5 degrees away from the horizontal.